So a couple of years ago, when Fortnite was much more popular than it is today, Epic found itself being sued by a couple different plaintiffs over their dance moves. Epic had released a series of dance move emotes that you could purchase or somehow acquire in the Fortnite game through gameplay or through V-Bucks or something like that. And we saw plaintiffs like 2 Milli had filed for infringement of their dance moves. He had the Milli Rock and he claimed that Epic had infringed on the Milli Rock. And all of those cases got thrown out because you can't copyright basic dance moves. There is no intellectual property protection. There's no legally recognized monopoly on basic moves that you do with your human body because everybody's got a human body and we all need to be able to express ourselves. And you can't come along and say that I can't move my arm that way or this way on camera and publish it because somebody else owns that arm movement or, or series of arm movements or something. So what we have is a policy or a philosophy set forth by the legislature, set forth by the people who voted for the legislature, that draws a line between non-copyrightable dance moves and copyrightable choreography. If you think of like a play or a musical or something, someone's on stage dancing for you know five minutes at a time or more for a musical number or something. So it's a series of dance moves that repeat with every performance. They tell a story of some kind or react to some, something some way. And it's got a script to it that, that it repeats every time the performance repeats. So what happens if you take a dance routine and extend it in time and make it the same routine over and over again? Is that enough to be choreography? Or does it have to be more sincere choreography as we know from theater? Well, that's what's at issue in this new case filed by Kyle Hanagami against Epic Games, this time for the It's Complicated Fortnite dance. And Epic Games has now responded with an anti-slap motion. In his complaint, Kyle Hanagami claims he is the author and copyright owner of the How Long choreography, which he's referring to as the registered choreography. They completed the choreography in 2017 and published it on YouTube here. So I'm going to play this without audio because I don't need the audio. In order to make a fair use, I'm going to make a fair use of this by not playing the audio because I don't, I'm not commenting on the audio, I'm commenting on the dance moves. So this is the five minute long publication with 36 million views on Kyle Hanagami's channel of how long. And this is what he has registered as copyrightable choreography. And so here's the details. They accuse Fortnite of releasing in Chapter 2, Season 3, the It's Complicated emote, which could be purchased for 500 V-Bucks, which I'm assuming is $5. And it contains a portion of Hanagami's registered choreography. It contains the most recognizable portion of Hanagami's choreography, the portion for the hook at the beginning of the chorus of the song, which repeats several times throughout the song. And that's important because if you're trying to make a fair use argument, um, taking the heart of the work, the uh, soft heart of the work, you know, if, if you've got a work that is simply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, what's the heart of that work? But sometimes there will be part of it that's emphasized, that means more, that the, the, the thing that's catchy or the meaning of the work or the turn of the story or the plot, uh, those can be the, the heart of the work and therefore more valuable or more protected. So the community was outraged that the It's Complicated emote embodied the Hanagami choreography. We can see these two side by side thanks to some efforts by other YouTubers. Like here's David Hecht who put them side by side. I think Hecht sounds like Hecht Partners. I don't know, that might be a law firm. But you see how the moves are certainly similar if not exactly the same moves. The question is, is that copyright infringement or is that unprotectable expression? and therefore not copyright infringement. So the short version is that Hanagami accuses Epic of misappropriating four seconds or so of Hanagami's registered choreography. 
But where it gets interesting is that Epic has now filed an anti-slap motion to dismiss or motion to strike the complaint and its claims. Imagine a ballet without a grand jeté, a yoga class without a downward dog pose, or the film Dirty Dancing without Patrick Swayze lifting Jennifer Grey over his head. To ensure that new creative works can use these building blocks of expression, Congress made clear that, although copyright law protects choreography, it does not protect individual dance steps or simple routines. Likewise, the Copyright Act ensures that a litigant cannot use a state law to create liability for copying works that are within the subject matter of copyright, whether protected by it or not, that's called preemption. These protections exist for good reasons, as artists are often inspired by and weave together dance steps into their own choreography. Through this lawsuit, plaintiff seeks to change these fundamental principles, imposing liability where it has never existed before. This is not the first time that plaintiff's counsel has attempted to convince a court to change copyright law in this way. In 2018 and 2019, plaintiff's counsel filed eight lawsuits in this district alleging that dance steps were copied in video games and attempting to create the outcry on social media that plaintiff references in his complaint. Wait a second, are you telling me this is the same law firm that filed those other losing dance moves cases? Hecht Partners. Where would he go over here? <laughs> it says Hecht Partners and David Hecht. I wonder whose name was on those old dance moves cases. Terrence Ferguson v. Epic Games. There we go. Parties and Attorneys. Epic Games, Dale Sindali. Terrence Ferguson, Hecht. Yowza. So this is the same law firm basically making the same mistake with a twist that now they're saying, okay, well, if it didn't work in the old one, in the old cases because dance moves are not copyrightable, well now we're going to make it into choreography, even though it kind of looks like it's just dance moves. Like, okay, he hear me out, compare this example of claimed choreography with this example of obviously well-established choreography. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to be a musical or tell a story or be more like expressive dancing than uh, club dancing, for lack of a... I don't, I'm not trained in this. I don't know how to describe it properly. But this is not the same kind of dancing as you would do in this situation. So is this dancing... And is this choreography, and if it is, where's the line? Or is this choreography, and this is also choreography? This is five minutes of repeatable movements set to music. That's just not part of a play. It's not part of a longer musical production. So that's, yeah, that's, that's an interesting attempt to, to overcome the problem that Hecht had in the last case with a different plaintiff. Well, <laughs> let's continue and see what, uh, what Epic Games and Kirkland and Ellis have to say. After the defendants in those cases, including Epic, moved to dismiss, including on the same grounds as this motion to dismiss, and that the Copyright Office had refused to register the dance steps, the plaintiffs voluntarily dismissed their complaints. Moreover, as discussed below, when similar lawsuits were filed in different courts asserting state law claims, those courts granted motions to dismiss those claims on preemption grounds, meaning that copyright preempts or uh, it takes over claims in its realm. So if copyright infringement is also theft, which is debatable, but let's say that somebody makes a state law that says copyright infringement is theft. So if I steal a movie via BitTorrent as a Pennsylvanian, Pennsylvania can sue me, or Pennsylvania can, um, Pennsylvania can charge me, that would be preempted by the U.S., the Federal Copyright Act, and so the state charge or state claim would be thrown out. As discussed below, this marked shift is foreclosed, is prevented by the Copyright Act, the U.S. Copyright Office's regulations, and Ninth Circuit case law, all of which make clear that performing or incorporating into a new work a dance step or simple routine does not make someone a copyright infringer. 
plaintiff's request to alter that approach, subjecting anyone who publicly performs a few dance steps to liability for copyright infringement, should be rejected and all claims in his complaint dismissed. With regard to his copyright claims, counts one and two, plaintiff registered with the Copyright Office a five-minute-long real-world dance consisting of numerous dancers performing different steps strung together. The Copyright Office registered the work as a whole, but in this litigation, plaintiff cherry-picks four steps that take two seconds to perform, and they're going to call them the steps, and asserts that they have been infringed by Fortnite. Specifically, plaintiff focuses his attention on four out of 16 steps in one of Fortnite's nearly 500 emotes called It's Complicated. Plaintiff's claim fails as a matter of law because the works, the five-minute dance that plaintiff registered on one hand and Fortnite on the other, are not substantially similar. Indeed, although plaintiff asserts that Fortnite infringes his copyrights, nowhere in the complaint does he assert, nor could he, that the works are similar as a whole. In contrast to plaintiff's five-minute dance performed by real dancers, Fortnite involves a highly creative fantasy world containing characters and settings, video game, etc., that have nothing to do with plaintiff's steps. The emote is only one tiny part of that world, and the accused steps are only a minority of its steps. So the strategy that Epic is coming right out of the gate with here is to attack on the grounds that even though the works are substantially similar, if the works are the five-minute choreography versus the two or four seconds of dance moves, but that's not how the court's going to compare them. It's going to compare them in the substantial similarity test as the five-minute choreographed work versus all of Fortnite. That's what Epic Games is asserting here. Now, I don't, I'm not 100% certain that that's the test, but these are some very good plaintiff's attorneys, so I'm going to go with that and assume that they've got it correct first, they say that plaintiff cannot avoid comparing the works as a whole. And when that analysis is conducted, it is clear that the registered work is not substantially similar to Fortnite, requiring dismissal of plaintiff's claim as a matter of law. In addition to the works as a whole not being substantially similar, plaintiff also cannot show substantial similarity between his work and the emote as a matter of law. As an initial matter, any copyright that plaintiff may hold in the five-minute registered work does not extend to the two seconds of steps in isolation. The steps are merely building blocks of choreographic expression which are not protectable, just as words and short phrases, geometric shapes, and colors are not protectable in written or printed works, as protecting them would prevent others from creating new works. In the danced context, this legal concept is apparent from a, the legislative history of the Copyright Act, which expressly states that simple dance routines are not copyrightable. B, the Copyright Office's regulations, which do not permit individual dance steps or simple routines to be registered for copyright protection. And C, Ninth Circuit case law holding that such elements are not protectable, but rather should be free for all to use. Thus, as a matter of law, the steps must be filtered out and cannot be considered in the substantial similarity analysis, leaving nothing to compare to the emote. Even if the steps were protectable, they are not. The choreography and the emote have marked differences, as is reflected by plaintiff's allegations or lack thereof. On the one hand, plaintiff does not allege that any of the remaining steps of his choreography were copied. And on the other hand, the majority of the emote contains steps that do not appear anywhere in plaintiff's work. As even the emote alone is not substantially similar to plaintiff's registered work, plaintiff's copyright claims should be dismissed for this reason as well. So Epic is saying that maybe there's some overlap in some of the moves between It's Complicated and Hanagami's work, but the, it's just some overlap. There's different moves in each of them as well, not just similar moves. Plaintiff also asserts an unfair competition claim, and Epic is going to claim that that is preempted by federal law, as we said before. On November 11th, 2017, Plaintiff published the YouTube video entitled Charlie Puth How Long Kyle Hanagami Choreography. The video contains a five-minute dance performed to the song How Long by Charlie Puth. As can be observed by a copy of the video, it contains about 520 counts of music broken down into 104 counts of music for each of the five different groups of dancers. As shown below, the dancers perform a variety of different movements, including slides, jumps, leg lifts, spins, waves, rolls, and freestyle choreography. Of the five-minute-long video, the steps at issue take about two seconds to perform. 
The lower half of the body simply repeats the same movement. The right foot kicks forward, then touches to the side as the hips twist counterclockwise. The upper body performs four movements, a shoulder touch, a head pull, a bent arm, finger point, and an arm opening. Plaintiff alleges that Epic appropriated the steps in Fortnite. Epic released an emote, August 25th, 2020, the It's Complicated Dance. The emote consists of 16 counts of movement, four of which are accused of being copied from plaintiff, so one quarter of the movement. The emote is accompanied by an original soundtrack without lyrics, not the How Long by Charlie Puth song. Some examples are below. There's a guy with a fish head doing the dance. Six months after Epic released the emote, February 18th, 2021, plaintiff applied for a copyright registration. The effective date is February 20th, 2021. Plaintiff's claim was limited to the choreography contained in the How Long video, not the music or the audiovisual elements. So they file a motion to dismiss. They also include anti-slap allegations that subjects a special motion to strike any cause of action against a person arising from any act of a person in furtherance of a person's right of free speech in connection with a public issue. The court determines whether the challenged cause of action arises from activity protected under the statute, so is it a free speech issue, and then the burden shifts to the plaintiff to demonstrate a probability of prevailing on the merits. First, Epic attacks that there is no substantial similarity between the works as a matter of law. You must own a valid copyright, and then you must show copying of constituent elements of the work that are original to you, the plaintiff is going to use the substantial similarity test, which has an extrinsic and an intrinsic component. The extrinsic test requires courts to filter out the unprotectable elements of the plaintiff's work and then compare the protectable elements that remain. The intrinsic test requires a more holistic, subjective comparison of the works to see whether they are similar substantially similar in total concept and feel. If either test fails, there is no substantial similarity. Non-infringement can be determined on a motion to dismiss, and a motion to dismiss should be granted where the extrinsic test is not satisfied. When, do, when performing the extrinsic analysis, the Ninth Circuit requires that the works be considered as a whole. Here, plaintiff does not even attempt to claim that his registered work as a whole is substantially similar to Fortnite. And this is a pretty simple argument. Fortnite is a big video game, and Plaintiff's work is a recording of a dance routine. So those are two different works and therefore are not substantially similar. Then Epic's second argument is that the steps alone are not protectable, so copying just the steps did not infringe on the larger work. Copyright does not extend to unprotectable elements. That principle has particular importance in works involving movements. In Bikram's Yoga College of India versus Evolution Yoga, the plaintiff registered a book, but the Ninth Circuit held that its copyright did not extend to a sequence of yoga steps. In the Rentmeister case, a plaintiff may have held a copyright in a photograph, but the Ninth Circuit affirmed a dismissal due to a lack of substantial similarity because the plaintiff did not own the general idea or concept of Michael Jordan in a leaping, grand jeté inspired movement that appeared in the work. There's the Michael Jordan on the left. And in Reese v. Island Treasures Art Gallery, despite the fact that the party's works showed the same dance movement, shown below, the court held that the idea of a hula dancer performing an Ike movement in the hula kahiko style from the noho position is not protected. And there's the picture versus the person in the Reese movement. Likewise, when the Copyright Office registers a choreographic work, the registration does not apply to the individual dance steps or simple routines within the work. For example, the Copyright Office refused to register the floss dance steps, which consisted of swaying the hips side to side while bending the knees on alternating sides and swinging the arms while keeping the wrists in a straight line, first at a slower tempo and then at a very fast tempo. I remember Ninja at Times Square trying to get people to do the floss, I think it was, and it was cringeworthy. When those steps later were incorporated into a much larger work, the Copyright Office did register the work. Given the prior attempt to register the floss, however, the Copyright Office made clear in the registration certificate that the work was registered based on original selection, coordination, and arrangement of steps or movements, and that the registration does not extend to individual dance steps. 
Here, whatever copyright may exist in the registered choreography as a whole, the steps standing alone must qualify as protectable to be considered in the substantial similarity analysis, and of course, Epic is saying they don't. Second, it is black letter copyright law that individual elements of works that are not protectable, where they involve the building blocks of creative expression, that if protected would inhibit the creation of new works. For example, words and short phrases are not protectable. This is because even if the word or short phrase is novel or distinctive or lends itself to a play on words, it contains a de minimis or a minimal amount of authorship, a, a lesser than minimum amount of authorship. Similarly, variations of long established Chinese word characters were not protectable as doing so would effectively give plaintiff a monopoly on renditions of these five Chinese characters. Blank forms which do not convey information are not copyrightable, as they are where information is recorded and do not convey information themselves, and mere changes in color are generally not subject to copyright protection. This principle applies with equal force to the field of dance. The Copyright Act protects works of authorship, including choreographic works. As explained in the Compendium of U.S. Copyright Office Practices, choreography is the composition and arrangement of a related series of dance movements and patterns organized into a coherent whole. Thus, the Copyright Office would register a choreographed music video for a song titled Made in the USA if the dance is a complex and intricate work performed by a troupe of professional dancers. Critically, however, choreographic works are distinguished from de minimis movements, dance steps, social, dances, and simple routines which are not copyrightable. That is because, in recognition that the constituent parts of that choreographic work must be available for others to use, Congress was explicit that simple routines are neither choreographic works nor copyrightable, and the Copyright Office's compendium explains that individual movements or dance steps by themselves are not copyrightable. Other examples of unprotectable movements include the basic waltz step, the hustle step, the grapevine, or the second position in classical ballet. Likewise, an end zone dance that consists of a few movements of the legs, shoulders, and arms is not protectable. Further, short dance routines consisting of only a few movements or steps with minor, linear, or spatial variations, even if the routine is novel or distinctive, are not protectable. As a result, it is not possible to copyright a series of dance movements that constitute a relatively small part of a theatrical performance, such as a discrete routine within a variety show, dance contest, or other exhibition. Thus, although the Made in the USA dance above might be registered as a whole, if during the chorus the dancers form the letters USA with their arms, the office would reject a claim limited to the USA gesture. This approach makes sense, as individual dance steps and short dance routines are the building blocks of choreographic expression, and allowing copyright protection for these elements would impede rather than foster creative expression. Thus, individual elements of a dance are not copyrightable, for the same reason that individual words, numbers, notes, colors, or shapes are not protectable by the copyright law. As discussed above, courts routinely hold that these types of elements are unprotectable and will dismiss copyright claims based on them at the pleadings stage, which is where we're at here. The Copyright Office's prior applications of this standard are particularly useful here. For example, in the prior cases filed by plaintiff's counsel against Epic, which let me just pause for a moment. You really don't get any better than that. Not only has this case been filed before in some major form, but it's the same attorney doing it. So the court gets to read into this a little bit and say, hey, I wonder what, what it is about these cases that they like. This attorney is really trying to get some money off of dance moves, or this attorney is really focusing their practice on copyright dance move cases. So that's just a gimme. That's just a freebie that you get because this one law firm files the same case and they've lost before. In one particularly salient instance, the plaintiff attempted to register the Carlton dance, which involved multiple dance steps. First, the dancer sways their hips as they step from side to side, while swinging their arms in an exaggerated manner. Then, the dancer takes two steps to each side while opening and closing their legs with their arms in unison. And finally, the dancer's feet are still and they lower one hand from above their head to the middle of their chest while fluttering their fingers. 
The Copyright Office refused registration of the Carlton dance because it was merely a simple routine. In another example, the office refused registration of a complicated dance routine by world-renowned modern dance company Pilobolus, titled Five Petal Flower. The Five Petal Flower dance routine was described as follows. On the left-hand side is the silhouette of a woman facing the right side of the screen. On the right-hand side, several people quickly tumble onto the stage, forming the silhouette of a five-petal flower with their intertwined bodies. Simultaneously, the silhouette of a giant hand moves from the left to the right side of the screen and appears to pull at the top of the five-petal flower. The hand then points at the flower formation in a common gesture that means, stay put. The flower formation stays still for the remainder of the video. The hand moves back to the left side of the screen and appears to pluck off the head of the woman, who shrugs her arms and slightly kicks her legs outward as if stunned. Her hands reach for the headless top of her body to feel for her head and then return to her sides. The giant hand moves over the woman's body and her head reappears. The hand moves again and most of her body disappears underneath the hand. The woman remains near motionless before the video abruptly ends. Despite the detailed description of Pilobolus dance, the Copyright Office concluded that the routine was de minimis because it consisted of simple movements that were insufficient to enable copyright registration. The Copyright Office's guidance is critical, as the Ninth Circuit has held that, when interpreting the Copyright Act, courts should defer to the Copyright Office because of its body of experience and informed judgment. The Copyright Office has determined that examples of works not subject to copyright include words and short phrases. Clerks routinely dismiss cases on the pleadings, relying solely on this regulation. Then they give a bunch of citations. Consistent with the foregoing, in the Bikram's Yoga College of India case, the court held that a sequence of 26 yoga poses was too simple to qualify as a choreographic work. On appeal, the Ninth Circuit acknowledged the touchstones of dance copyright discussed above, but focused its analysis on the fact that the yoga poses were uncopyrightable under uh, 17 U.S.C. 102b, which is simply the section that says that ideas are not copyrightable. Here, plaintiff likewise cannot establish that the steps are protectable, particularly given that they are even simpler and shorter than 1. the multi-step Carlton, 2. Pilobolus intricate modern dance piece, and 3. the 26 poses in Bikrams. They are merely a sequence of hip twists and arm motions that are the kind of movements that are unprotectable on their own. Moreover, they are indisputably shorter than the 26 yoga poses that were denied protection by the Ninth Circuit. And then Epic Games goes into another argument that there are other reasons why the steps are not substantially similar to the emote. The emote contains 16 counts of movement and plaintiff does not allege that 12 of these counts were copied. This is 75% of the work. This is for good reason, as those movements do not appear in plaintiff's work. Thus, as the registered work is not substantially similar to the emote, counts 1 and 2 should be dismissed. Then, finally, the unfair competition claim should be dismissed because that's a state law claim. And when you make a state law claim that also is a copyright claim, the copyright claim gets priority, otherwise known as preemption. Uh, then they oppose the attorney's fees request, and they oppose punitive and exemplary damages, and they request that the complaint be dismissed with prejudice. And I'm assuming if you, if you with prejudice dismiss a copyright case, then Epic could come after them for attorney's fees and such. Of course, Epic Games is a rather large and wealthy gaming company, so who knows if they'll get that from a smaller dance troupe or, or choreographer. But yeah, that's interesting to me as a copyright attorney because you see what the law firm is doing, what the hecked law firm is doing there. They lost when they were asserting dance move cases, so now they're going to assert what's arguably a dance moves case, but they're going to call it choreography. And you saw that it doesn't quite reach the definition of what I would call choreography. Is there some argument in there that the five minute long recording or choreography is choreography. Yeah, I think that is much more easy to defend, that that is choreography. But then using four steps and two seconds of that five minute long choreography is like using the eight note ostinato of a longer musical work in Katy Perry's case and, and flame, joyful noise and all that. 
So yeah, let me know what you think of that one. I thought that was very interesting. I think Epic will win that one. I just think it's very interesting that that this one law firm is really, really, really trying to make something out of these dance moves cases. I really wonder why they're doing that. I guess I'm thinking deep pockets. I'm thinking Epic has deep pockets. So if if this law firm could just finally get one case where where it's arguable and Epic it isn't clear that Epic's going to win, then they'll get a big payday of some kind. I guess I understand it, but I don't condone it. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching! Special thanks to my top supporters in June. John Steele, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hytov, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Shadow Tycho, Good Broge, Pure Magma, Eric Tams, Tech Tech Potato, The Blood Soaked Survivors, Wyatt Calandro, and King Ares. You can support Lawful Masses on Patreon.com slash LJ French, Sponsus.com slash Law, through YouTube memberships, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for our weekly live production stream on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye.